two. Good morning, everybody. So uh, this is the 10 o'clock Wednesday. This is Wednesday, yeah. 10 o'clock Wednesday version of Home Built in Review. Uh, my name is Joel Waltz. I work for your Home Built Aircraft Council. Today we've got Mark Goldberg with us here today, and, it's, and the big story is uh, the Bear Hawk production line, which we've got the newest model out here, the Model 5, which uh, if, if we had Oshkosh last year, we could have did debuted it, but it's being debuted at this Oshkosh, and uh, what what Mark's going to tell us, I believe, uh, is kind of the story of Bearhawk, and then we'll finish up with what's going on with the five. So, can you, can you bring us up to speed on how it all started, what the different models are, and then we can go into that. Okay. Well, uh, I became interested in the Bearhawk in uh, about the year 2000, when I uh, took my newly finished RDA. Uh, down to Mexico to a, uh, a house I just finished, a local ship in the town, and I didn't really think about it, but the ship was very gravelly and it damaged my airplane. I had no business taking that airplane that was so close to the ground into a gravelly trip like that, so I started looking for a plane that would do that, and I found the Bearhawk from a article that had been in Sport Aviation a few years before, and. Uh, became interested in it and bought a set of plans because there were no kits available at that time. You built it from plans. And uh, I looked at the plans when I got them and I said, this is really beyond my abilities. And I called the design engineer and uh, said, you know, I really like to have one, but I just don't think I'm man enough to build it from raw materials. That's, uh, it was, was very intimidating. And I said, is there anybody making a kit for it? And he said, there's one fellow that's uh, talked about doing it. And uh, I called him. And I said, uh, if you're cutting metal already, I'm interested in putting the deposit down on the kit. And if you're not, uh, you might consider doing it in Mexico, where I've spent a fair part of my life and had a lot of friends. And uh, so the end of that story was we set up a factory uh, right near a place where I've spent a lot of years of my life, went to university down there and uh, in, in the state of Puebla, New Mexico. And uh, we started with the fourth place Bearhawk, which was the only design at that point. And uh, it was interesting. I'd never, you know, been, had anything to do with the factory before. And it was challenging, but uh, interesting and educational the whole time. So uh, we made this fourth place Bearhawk for a number of years. And uh, then several years later, Bob Barrows, the design engineer who really is the key to all this, uh, came out with another design, a two-seat tandem patrol, which is similar in configuration to a Super Cub, which is awfully popular, a good airplane over the years. And uh, I was a little slow in my desire to tool up again to make another model. Uh, eventually, I decided to go ahead and move forward with that. We tooled up and started making the patrol kits for uh, uh, for customers. So uh, well, let me stop you. So if two is difficult, we've got five models now, right? Yeah. Okay. Each one has gotten easier. Then our next model was a two-seat side-by-side that we decided to do after having been asked for years and years and years by people if we had a two-place side-by-side model instead of the tandem. Uh, everybody has their preferences, what they like, and uh, some people want side by side. So Bob came up with a design for the campaign, which is basically a modified four-place Bearhawk fuselage with patrol wings. And it's quite a rugged little airplane. Uh, there's one that flew recently, it's our first one flying, and uh, we're very confident it's going to be a popular model. And then uh, this latest model is the, what Bob calls the Model 5. And it's a six-seat model. And uh, sort of a way to look at it in the fourth place is to compare them to the Cessna 180 and the 185. The fourth place is the 180, and this is the big six-seat 185. And uh, Bob's a great designer. All of his airplanes have very similar features. Uh, the way the shock strut is, they're all aluminum skinned wings, completely flush riveted, there's not a round head rivet in the breeze, which is the best way to design a wing. Uh, why aren't all wings like that? It's because it's the most expensive way to build a wing, and most difficult. But that's what we did. That's not what the builders have to do. It's the most aerodynamic, it's the lightest, and it's the strongest. So it's a win-win for the builder that 
that gets a wing of this particular kind of design. So when you say that's what we do, so are all the wing kits a quick build, if you will? Uh, they come assembled? The, the wings in our quick build kit yes. uh, are largely done for you. Uh, there's very little work in the wings. We say 125 to 150 hours to build a, to finish, completely finish a wing, compared to the thousand hours of total work to build the kit. Yeah, great. So we won't have to compete with the sounds of freedom here, but I, I think we can work through that. Um, so that's kind of a, a different progression in, in uh, designs that we actually started with a four place, moved down to a two place, and now, as far as I'm aware of, it's probably the only six place uh, amateur built aircraft available. Isn't it? I, I think there's one other. Okay. Okay. But I think ours is better. Oh, well, of course, yeah. And one, one absolute fact is that's an aluminum airplane. Yeah. And all of Bob's designs have sealed tube structures in the fuselage. And uh, for backcountry flying, that's best. If ever you have an accident, have a bad day out in the country somewhere, for yes. whatever reason, having a sealed tube structure around you can be a lifesaver, as opposed to an all-aluminum airplane. Right, so now tell me then why we've got an aluminum wing, and tell us about the ribbon airfoil that uh, you guys are employing. Well, uh, a fabric wing, if you look at one, there's the, the, the wing ribs that give the airfoil its shape, and there's all this scalloping of the fabric between the ribs. And uh, it's not as efficient as an aluminum skin wing where you have the true airfoil the whole span. So it's, it's just more efficient way of doing things. Uh, Bob covers, all of his airplanes have uh, fabric cover, ailerons and flaps, but they don't need to be aluminum skin. And they're lighter that way. Yeah, or B-17. Yeah, lots of airplanes in World War II fast airplanes were built that way. And it's, Bob is very picky about weight. His airplanes are the lightest and the strongest. And that's why certain design features of why he designs airplanes the way he does. Okay. Can you, uh, now that we've moved through that progression of aircraft, uh, can you tell us a little bit more detail about how this five actually came about? Because you already had a very rugged four place, uh, considerably large aircraft that you could haul a lot of stuff in and out of the backcountry. So we expanded on that. How did it happen? Well, it's, it is a little story. Uh, Bob had actually drawn up a set of plans for this Model 5 in 2009 uh, for a friend of his in Virginia where he lives. The guy's a big guy. And he wanted a little bit more shoulder room than the, than the fourth place, which is, the fourth place is about as wide as a 182. It's, it's not a narrow fuselage, but this guy's big and he wanted a little more elbow room. So Bob drew a set of plans just for this individual. And he started building one from the plans. But he had some health issues and the project was languishing. And uh, so nothing was really happening with it. We kicked around, me and Bob, over the years, what could be done, what could be done. Then one day I was talking with a fellow who is a very prolific bear hog builder. He scratch built from plans alone and raw material a four place bear hawk in a very reasonable amount of time. Then he scratch built from plans alone a uh, patrol. Now, I don't know how, you know, some of y'all I'm sure where scratch building an airplane from raw materials is not from the, from the faint of heart. It's a tremendously hour, hours and time consuming project. Uh, not many finish it that attempt to do that. There's 90% don't finish. But this fellow was able to do build very nice airplanes. So he was then he called me one day and wanted to order an LSA kit. Uh, I said, you want a kit? I'm surprised. He said, no, I'm getting old. I'd like to build from the quick build kit. So this individual, uh, who I'm going to introduce you to in just a minute. Finish. I was going to say, is his name Colin? <laughs> finish, I think we've got a guy standing back here who looks a lot like this. So come on up, Colin. Then finish the LSA kit. Then one day we were talking and he says, God, I'm getting bored, I need a project. Colin loves to spend his time in the shop building airplanes. He's retired and that's what he wants to do with his retirement uh, years for uh, his own enjoyment. So Colin told me, I, I'd really like to, I'm looking for something, I nail it say he's done. And so I kind of brought it up to Bob first. And I said, you know, Colin sure would be absolutely the best person 
to build this Model 5, to do something with that languishing project. And so we talked about it, uh, we talked to Colin about it, and uh, we worked out a deal, and Colin took the started project of the Model 5 and turned it into this one, which is the prototype. Colin talking back and forth with Bob all the time, but maybe Colin should tell you about that a little. Yeah, I'd like to find out uh, what that you took from the original design and maybe added to, um, and what we, how we got what we have now. And before we get to that, is this, you said it's the production one, is this gonna be uh, the same as uh, what will be available in kit form? Any changes to that? A few changes, not many, mostly in the seating. If you see this one, you see it's only got four seats in it. Uh, in the production kits, which we've already delivered seven of, and I have another eight or nine on order, that middle seat there is about 10 inches further forward, and then there's a most an aft bench seat, which is the fifth and sixth seats. That's the main difference. There's a couple other smaller differences, but that's, that's the main one. Okay, and Colin, um, tell us about the experience in actually putting this thing together from where it was. Well, I received it, it was a fuselage that had been tapped in here, and there were some things on the bottom. Just a little closer. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I spent a lot of time with Bob on the phone, talking about what he wanted to do here, what he wanted to do there. He had a set of plans, but they weren't totally finalized yet. And so, for instance, the flat plate, where we had to redesign the flat plate entirely to make it work. So we raised that off the floor about five inches, which makes it much, much easier to grab a hold of than four inches. Very, very nice. There are a number of other things, two new structural changes, and I wanted that grade change, so I did all that. Once it was all completely finalized, and I welded the frame up, we went from there. The wings actually came from one side. But they had to have some modifications too, and then the sparring caps weren't really heavy enough places to get the 3,000 pound gross weight on them. So, so there was some extra work to do there. It was about two years worth of work putting it together. So don't let that be any reflection of what it's going to take you to do it. I had 2,000 hours of doing that, but with this kit, you could do it easily in half that easily. 1,000 hours would be a good number, but most builders could put one of these things together, I think. Simple new tools in one weekend and you're on your way, right? That's right. Maybe not. So is the wing uh, an adaptation of what the original four place wing it's escorts? Not the original. Not the original. Okay. The, the original four place that we started with was a NACA 4412 Air Force. Bob, uh, on the patrol, collaborated with a man named Harry Midland, who was an airfoil designer, and kind of a self-taught airfoil designer, who uh, was a very smart guy, according to Bob. And Bob worked with Harry Midland to come up with this airfoil for the patrol. And eventually, Bob wanted to test that airfoil on the port place, as well as some other design features that he came up with on the patrol and the LSA subsequently, uh, that he wanted to roll into the four place. And we call that our Model B four place bear pod. So the patrol, all, all of our kits now, except for the LSA, have this same airfoil, meaning the ribs are identical, the same ribs. The wings are not the same. The lighter airplanes have thinner skins and less strong spars because they don't need to be as strong because they're lower gross weight airplanes. But uh, that's how the Model B Bearhawk happened, and that's this wing is interchangeable on the production kits with the four place. They're identical, just like the Cessna 180, 185 use the same wing, but the fuselage is bigger on the 185. Okay, that's great. So, uh, isn't one of the advantages? My understanding of this regular airfoil is you can maintain the original stall speed that you have, but you're going to get much better cruise speed out of it. Well, the truth is, we had different expectations when we did this. We thought, me and Bob, and Bob's way smarter than I am, that we were going to see a big reduction, some reduction in, in the stall speed, and very little reduction, if any, a very, very little additional speed. The Riblet airfoil is about an inch and a half taller from top to bottom than the 44, original 4412 airfoil. So I thought that meant more drag and maybe we lose a little speed. We were both 100% wrong. What we saw was with the Ridwood airfoil is about five miles an hour more cruise speed and a knot or two slower stall speed, but a little bit better slow speed characteristics. Yeah, so you open the envelope just a little bit with that. I noticed another uh, characteristic that kind of shows the the innovation and, and improvements that they make over time. I was looking at the horizontal stab and the vertical. Um, if you notice, most 
um, uh, aircraft in this category, the stabilators actually are just a flat platform, similar to what the elevator and the rudder look like. They've actually incorporated a airfoil design in it, and then you tell me that, uh, what was the improvements that you got out of that? I believe that Bob found out by putting the airflow shade, you can give a more effective surface and actually make it smaller. Is that correct, Mark? Uh, Bob consulted with Harry Riblet about that. Right. And Mr. Riblet told him if he went to airfoil shape ribs on the horizontal stabilizer and on the vertical stabilizer, he would, in effect, have the plane act like it had 20% more surface area without any additional surface area with airfoil shape ribs. So after the patrol, which he went to the airfoil shaped ribs on the horizontal and vertical stabilizers, all of the subsequent models have that. Excellent. Uh, so I think that, that speaks to, uh, uh, it's not a static design. You guys keep making little improvements in it. So Bob loves to tinker with the designs. All the time we're doing little improvements, not gigantic things, sure. just small things. Sure. Um, how about little performance numbers we can uh, talk about here? Well, uh, I don't know how starting with starting how slow can I go? With you talking this one or the, the different models? Let's we'll start with the five okay. since it's sitting here. Well, the, the Model 5 uh, has a really strong engine in it. Uh, it's an IL 580 like only, making 350 horsepower. And it has this really strong three-blade carbon fiber trailblazer prop. It has great takeoff thrust. So this airplane uh, is capable of 165, 168 mile an hour cruise speed, which is pretty unusual for a plane that'll take off in about 200 feet. Uh, most people won't fly it at that power of setting because it's about 17 gallons an hour. Most people will fly throttle back to about 12 and a quarter, 12.4 gallons an hour, and you'll see an uh, airspeed in about 150, 152 miles an hour, uh, 130 knots. Uh, so that's what you see on the top end. It has flown and does fly throttle back to about eight and a half gallons an hour, even this gigantic 580, throttle back to about eight and a half gallons an hour, still about 115 or 20 miles an hour. So if you're really trying to stretch your range going uh, somewhere far where there's no gas, uh, you can do it. Uh, slow speed, you approach from about 55 to about 70 miles an hour, depending on your needs and where you're going into. Uh, with all the flaps down, there's gigantic flaps on these airplanes. Their, their flaps are nine feet, two inches long, tremendous surface area of flaps. And you come in and it, in ground effect now, with full flaps, you'll actually touch down about 40 miles an hour. Uh, if you hold it off, hold it off. Up in the air, you'll see a stall speed of 43, 44 miles an hour when you don't have that cushion of ground effect. So with 40 mile an hour touchdown speed, I can get stopped pretty quick. I'm talking less than 300 feet, I'm sure. If there are really good pilots who do 300 feet. Yeah. Yes, in, yeah. in the poor place. Uh, this flies very, very similar to our four place pair on we've been making for so long. Uh, when I'm in this airplane, I close my eyes and move the stick, it feels exactly like my four place, which I've been flying for a long time, have had 500 hours in it, and my four place was hit number one at the public hit factory. Okay. And we adapted the new Ridland airfoil to it and uh, made the Model B enhancements that we could uh, to the old stuff. So uh, let's take that performance and go down to the ice floor.
utility category strength at full gross. Their standard category, utility category, and acrobatic category. Uh, so uh, Bob's planes are all designed for the utility category strength at full gross. Just for example, my neighbor's 182 had one gross weight for standard category strength and a gross weight for utility category strength that, I, as I recall, was 300 pounds less. But Bob designs in. Uh, it works out to be about a 17 percent margin of safety is the way I look at it in his structures. So all of his planes are utility category strength at full gross. So at 1,500 pounds, the LSA can be, you know, uh, uh, have its airworthiness in the regular experimental category rather than the LSA category. And you still have a really strong airframe. Uh, the next one, the patrol, well, it comes in and lands and touches down in the very low 30 mile an hour range, 30, 32. Uh, mine has, cruises at 120 miles an hour. Uh, at, at a, at the sweet spot for cruise is 5,500, 6,500 feet. When people tell you what their planes cruise at, the people that are trying to sell you a, something, they always give you the number at kind of the sweet spot, which is there where you've still got good power, but you're not too high. And that's, that's what we do also, only we don't exaggerate our numbers. We are truthful with our numbers that we really see these. So my LSA is a 120 mile an hour cruise airplane with an 0200 engine. Uh, the Patrol uh, is a 2,000 pound gross airplane and you really have trouble filling that airplane up to 2,000 pounds. And getting it at, at the FCG is, is very problematic. Uh, if you're trying to load it as, well, as far aft as you can, you, you pretty well have a hard time doing it. Uh, empty weights are from about 1,100 up to about 1,230. So there's a you know 1,900 to 1,000 pound useful load. And uh, it comes in and touches down about 35 in ground effect, 35 miles an hour. And with the constant speed prop, sees a cruise of 150, 55 mile an hour. With fixed pitch, 140, 145. And that's to be compared with a super cab, where you're seeing 90 to 100 mile an hour cruise. And the patrol will get in and out anywhere that a super cab will get in and out of. Uh, in addition, the controls are very responsive and uh, it's bigger than a Super Cub. So it's, it's become quite a popular model for the guys that give it a try that aren't, that don't think the Super Cub is the only airplane in the world. Right. right. So I, the, yeah, I'd like to point out a performance number most people don't advertise. If you've got a stole plane, you want to talk about how slow you can go and how uh, small of a field. If you've got a cross country airplane, you want to talk about how fast. I like the ratio of how slow can you go and how fast can you go in the same airplane. And it sounds like you guys have got that ratio number about as high as you can get it. Uh, it's because Bob is a really talented designer. That's why. Yeah. Huh? Okay. Um, can we open it up for questions? Are you guys ready for that? Absolutely. Uh, I'm, uh, but before we do that, uh, there's a lot of good answers at, at their booth, which is just there. Uh, you can just walk over there. And then your website is www.bearhawkaircraft.com. Okay. Um, let's open it up to yes, the sir, Go ahead. Yellow shirt. Number two game, is that with tire No, that was with regular tires. It, it did its original flying on 850s. Yes. Uh, these tires went on about a week ago. Why? because for some reason pilots when they walk by an airplane with these gigantic tires it grabs their attention and they think it's a macho airplane you see five seven miles an hour is what I, the way i understand it but i believe uh, in an interview last year you were talking about the 850s you had on there that you didn't think you were exploring the full uh, potential for short takeoff because you could get your angle of attack up high enough. It's true you can, get, you can get on and off shorter with the big tires as well as absorbing the impact and not beating up your airplane on rough fields or rocks and gravel bars and stuff like that. Yeah, because if you can imagine, you, you've got a better uh, potential angle of attack, I guess I'll call it, yep. on the ground. Okay. These, are for the, these tires are for guys that want to land off airport. And uh, I don't do that kind of flying myself. But, like I said, it attracts people's attention, and for the show here, we put them on. That's a good question. It sounds like the answer is about what you get with all of them. I know some people that, uh, 
they pack up uh, their big tires uh, in FedEx and up to wherever they're going to go mountain flying, uh, especially if you live in South Texas like me where it takes all day to get out of the state. And uh, you fly there with the small tires and swap them out. So um, that was a good question. Any uh, other questions? Here we go, picture. Are the flaps different on the patrol versus the other ones? Flaps, no. They're all straight flaps. They're not Fowler flaps or any of those kinds of things. They're straight flaps, and, and they're identical in size on all those models. They're all all, all exactly the same. Oh, so so with a longer wing, you're just going to get more aileron? It's, it's not a longer wing. Oh, okay. It's the same way. Gotcha, okay. With, with changes internally depending on the gross weight of the model. There we go. But the shape of a length, scored, flap, aileron, they're identical. That's great. And we got, what, 40 degrees deflection on the flaps? Yes. Okay. Cool. Good question. Any more now? You, you can see how big the flaps are here. There we go. What they look like. Uh, they're quite effective. You come in with full full flaps like that, and uh, you you got to be a little careful when you round out because you pick the nose up with that much flaps and no power, it pays off pretty quick. Yeah. So you, 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 sh you should be close to the ground when you do that. That sounds like code word for bounce, yeah. Um, actually, not that, but you, you land a little harder. Yeah. yeah. Well, one of the features of the airplanes we, of all of Bob's designs, is the shock struts. If you look there, there the shocks are not spring gear. They're not bungees. They're what's called an oil dampened spring shock. And the benefit of it is you drop it in and it sticks. It doesn't bounce you back in the air like the other designs. Yeah, nice. we're, we're big fans of that. Nice. Now, obviously, we have to close the, the big gaping door to get the flaps down. You're not going to fly with the door open. But that big door, man, you can shove all kind of stuff in there. You should have seen this airplane when it came up here. It was full of stuff. The fourth place that's in our booth, he had it packed. There, there's quite a lot. We, we did a video on YouTube called Bear Hawk the Pickup Truck. And we that parked my pickup next to my four place. Had my four place loaded with suitcases, rifle cases, camping gear, gas tanks. And we basically, in this we didn't rehearse this to get the most visual effect. We did it one time, kept going into my house and bringing up more and more. And basically, we filled up the bed of my pickup truck with what we put pulled out of that airplane. And this one's even bigger. The cargo area is significantly bigger than the four place. This is the one for when you want to go hunt that elk or whatever, that moose, and cut it up and uh, bring it back in. This this one will really do it. Everybody talks about, yeah, hauling the moose out of the backcountry. I'm not sure how many people really want to mess the back end <laughs> up with a moose. But, um, so, uh, yeah, we can even do the, the clowns coming out of the Volkswagen at the circus act <laughs> out of this thing. I mean, you just keep pouring them out of there. So, um, how about delivery times if somebody wants to order a kit today? So. Well, we're a little backlog now, like most people, most kit companies in, in this industry, uh, which is unusual. Things really changed. For We've been in business 20 years, like I said, until last year, I was able to keep inventory. I've tried to keep inventory of kits all the time of all the different models on hand. But, you know, last year in the spring, things went crazy. And people started buying kits. Uh, my warehouse is empty now and uh, we're back ordered until September of next year. Uh, we're taking steps at the kit factory to try and speed up production. We added on to the factory, almost doubled the size of our factory. We hired a bunch of young kids that were training, uh, seeing who listens and is smart and we're gonna, gonna learn how to do the things we ask them to and uh, put them with the skilled guys that have been there. We, we uh, have the same workers largely that we've had for the whole 20 years. These, we don't lose workers because we take real good care of these guys. Uh, the skills that they've learned, we, we value them and treat them respectfully, and uh, they, they don't leave. They don't leave. So uh, we're doing our best to ramp up production, and I hope that with our efforts, we can speed up that delivery. Uh, I, I'm promising people right now deliveries per our current pace of production. But I'm actually very confident we're going to improve on that. But I'd rather surprise people with a pleasant surprise that we can get them their kit sooner than disappoint them that we're late. Yeah, so the September next year is you still got orders right now that you're fulfilling. You're saying if you place an order today. That's correct. So uh, is there any components that, uh, uh, how, how, do you, how is your kit delivered? Is it all complete or is it 
different people make gifts. No, we usually make one delivery at a time. It's a big package. We each wing is individually crated in a crate that we make at the factory of one inch square steel tubing. And the two crates are stacked on top of each other and the fuselage is mounted on top of that. Uh, previously, we would put this shrink wrap white plastic around it all for delivery, like you see boats going down the highway from both factories being delivered, similar to that. Uh, more recently, we bought a uh, the enclosed trailer, and if it's just one kit going out, we stick it in the enclosed trailer and, and deliver it like that. When it arrives at your place, my delivery driver, who's a friend of mine, is a local fellow, we don't trust the kids with a commercial transport company because generally they don't know how to take care of airplanes. And my friend gets in there, he pulls everything out of the fuselage first, because there's comes with a lot of parts packed inside the fuselage, tail surfaces, landing gear, uh, flooring, all the sheet metal parts. Uh, that's sitting on the floor of your shop. Then the two, my driver with the customer, unbolt the fuselage from on top of the wing crates. When it's empty, two people can easily lift it off, put it down on the floor, on the stands that it's connected to the wing crates with. Then the individual wings are either, either taken out together or alternately, if you want to save $300, you can, with my driver, help him take the wings out of those crates, put the wings in like a cradle, and then send those crates back and I recycle them back to the factory so we don't have to make them quite as often. Great, so I'm, I'm looking at the plane, I see a lot of different uh, uh, building skills involved. You've got, you've got steel tubing, but is there any welding required? Zero welding on our quick build kits. It's all done for you at the factory. Okay, so don't let the steel tube 4132 be fuse scare you or, or the tail feathers. Uh, obviously, you're going to be covering it with fabric. And the aluminum uh, wings, uh, you said that was minimal. And basically the wings come with the top skin finish riveted. The Good. top skin on all of Bob's designs wraps the leading edge and that's finish riveted. The, the back aft edge of it is riveted to the bottom flange of the main spar. And the bottom skin is now all drilled in dimples, as are the ribs underneath. And it comes to you with a few pop rivets to kind of hold it in place for shipping. You drill out those pops, you peel that bottom skin back, and you've got access to install your aileron mechanism, flap mechanism. You used to have to install the fuel tanks in the tank bay. Now we do that for you at the factory. And uh, the flaps and ailerons are also packed in those crates.